everybody. This is actually something a little different. It's, it's more of a video response um, than it is anything. Uh, so one of the people that I subscribe to is Man Made Mead. Uh, and I'll go ahead and link all his information uh, down below and, and try, to, try to give him as much publicity as possible. Uh, he puts out a, a really good channel on mead making. And uh, so uh, he touched on a couple of topics on his podcast that he has subscribed uh, going um, that has been going through in my brain as well. And so I thought I'd uh, touch upon that and maybe uh, through the video response we can get a, a lot of collaboration uh, between other people that might have some of the same questions and thoughts. And, and uh, so on his most recent um, video that he has uploaded to YouTube, it's uh, What's New with Mead. And that's his uh, podcast that he has going. And this is uh, on uh, one of the topics that he talked about with Braggots. And that is something that uh, I don't do a lot of beer brewing per se, but it's actually one of the first things I did this year. And so I said, hmm, that's kind of interesting. And uh, uh, so I thought I'd go ahead and, and uh, kind of go through how I did my Braggot and then uh, how it came out, some of the lessons learned and that sort of thing. So the, the, uh, the beer itself, the recipe, I should say, uh, I just got offline, like I do pretty much everything, and I got it off the American Home Brewers Association, and it is an English braggot, uh, which um, I, from the recipe itself, it sounded like it would be a really, really good beer. Uh, it has kind of that wheat, uh, honey flavor to it, and uh, then it also added some cinnamon. Let me read through here some of the ingredients. Um, cinnamon, uh, pepper, chopped ginger, uh, gallon gale, which I've never used before, and uh, cloves. In fact, gallon gale I had a hard time finding up here in central Maine. I finally found a little uh, apothecary store that had all these dry, dried herbs, and lo and behold, they had it. So uh, I found, uh, I've got my connection for that in the future. So uh, the, the original recipe on this was for five gallons, which is what uh, I made. And, and actually, I teamed up with a buddy of mine that's been brewing uh, beer for a lot longer than I have. And uh, we worked together on this, and uh, it came out really, really well. I'll link the, uh, the uh, recipe to this uh, video as well. But uh, anyway, so um, the beer itself, it, it, uh, the way I approached it, I know uh, Man Made Meat, he talks about a couple of three different ways of making a braggot. I went with the, uh, I don't know if it's the traditional way or not, but uh, the, uh, the mash method where I do a mash and, and do all my grains and uh, do that boil for the 60 minutes or whatever it was. And then in the, in the primary fermentation, I add the honey. And then let that ferment out. And then when I move everything to the secondary, I add all the other spices. Uh, you know, the cinnamon, what is it? Cinnamon, black pepper, candy, ginger, gallagher, cloves. And then uh, uh, I added a little bit more honey at the end of that as well. And that's really one of the only two deviations I made from the original recipe. The other one was um, the recipe called for 12 pounds of amber biscuit malt. Uh, that just seemed like an enormous amount and uh, from the people at the brewing store and my, my buddy that I brewed with. Uh, and so we cut that, that back to one pound. Um, in the future, I think we would actually bump that up a little bit, uh, but probably not 12 pounds though for a five gallon batch. That was just, you know, just, it just seemed like an astronomical amount. But uh, without uh, any further ado, actually, I'm going to get this one out of the way. This was one we're getting ready to rack. It's, uh, it's not the, um, the sparkling ginger we're working on. This is actually just a plain sizer uh, that we've had brewing for uh, 11, 12 days. It's still, it's still uh, fermenting a little bit. Uh, but as you can see, it's actually getting ready. All this uh, uh, sediment in the bottom that's fallen, oh, what they call it, less in... Uh, and mead uh, is true in beer, less in mead. I, I get that confused. Uh, like I said, I'm still learning uh, some of this, the terminology, but I'm getting ready to rack it off that. So we'll, we'll be doing that tonight. The, the end product is, is we're hoping to turn out another batch like this. This is another sizer that we did. It, it, we're really, really proud of. And uh, pretty much everyone we've given to really likes it and wants more. Uh, we just don't have any more. This is one of two bottles that I have left. So uh, we're gonna be working on that. So anyways, let me move this out of the way and then we will open up this beer. So this braggot, um, the other, probably the other thing we would do is ferment it a little bit longer, uh, not ferment it, um, carbonate it just a little bit longer. We, we put it on a keg 
kegging system and he carbonated it for you know four or five days uh but it just seems like it it loses its head a little bit quicker than we would like but if you i don't know if you just heard that or not but it's it's got some some fizz to it so um it's a nice caramel color it does have a good head uh when you first pour it so it's i mean you can tell it is carbonated but it uh it loses it a little bit quicker than i would like but it it came out really really nice initially when we first bottled it it came out a little watery almost almost like it was missing something but as it aged uh, you know longer and longer it, it took on took on more and more of a body and uh the directions on the recipe said to let it age eight to twelve months which for a beer is a long time but for a mead obviously it's not so next time i think we will uh let it let it age a little bit longer before we start drinking it but uh uh, again, it's, this was our experiment, but anyways, it's, uh, you can already see the head disappearing off it, but it's, uh, when you smell it, you get that kind of, a, that, uh, caramel flavor, you get a little bit of honey, but, uh, yeah, I, I can definitely taste the, uh, the pepper, the long, long pepper, a little bit of the ginger, I think, and, uh, I don't really pick up the cinnamon, Maybe, maybe a little bit, but not, not enough to, for it to be any, you know, loud pronouncement type of deal. It's, uh, like I said, it, it could use a little bit more body. So I think next time we'll, uh, we'll add a little bit more of the, uh, the amber biscuit malt and, uh, you know, let it age a little bit longer and then carbonate a little bit longer. But, uh, yeah, you can see just after a couple of less than a minute that most of the head is gone but it, it's tasty and it uh it's something um uh, i'm definitely going to make again uh, as i get uh you know more and more things going i might i might do like a batch a year of this and then just you know like i said just kind of let it set but uh anyways that's uh i just thought it was kind of interesting that he was posting that and i've been following him so i thought i'd uh give him a shout out and say uh you know, to thank him for posting that and to cover covering some of the details on that for some of us that are, are following that topic. So um, that's really all I had. So uh, thanks for watching. And uh, uh, like I said, if you're interested in doing something like this, I'll post all the information to the recipe down below. And I'll also post the, the link to uh, Man Made Mead. Uh, if anyone's interested, he's, he's a really good resource on that. So thanks for watching.